The orcs, or the orcoid race in general, is the single most numerous species that originated in the Milky Way galaxy. They are found literally everywhere anyone has ever looked. On barren asteroids hurtling through space, on death worlds where the very microbes in the water are hostile to non-native life forms, even in the warp, there are orcs that are farmed every single day by the chaos god Korn in order to challenge his demonic champions. If reproduction is the only true purpose in life, then the orcs have mastered the purest sense of the meaning of life. From a single orcoid, hundreds of spores will fly into the wind, and like dandelions of death and destruction, they will come to rest on a surface and develop into one of the many orcoid subspecies. This of course makes the orcs asexual, meaning that there doesn't have to be any sort of fusion between organisms. A single orc can populate an entire planet in a matter of solar years. Now that brings me to a valid but very goofy question that we get a lot. Does an orc have sexual organs? And the answer is simple. You just have to ask your mom. She'll know. And with that said, I want to welcome you guys back to another 40 facts about the 40k universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and today we're going to be talking about the orc reproduction cycle. If you guys are new to the channel, we post Warhammer 40k lore videos every single day. If you guys have questions about the 40k universe, no matter how goofy it may be, just ask down in the comment section below and I'll try to create a video for you guys. Also, if you have any suggestions for like specific characters that you guys would like us to talk about, just let me know. And uh, if you enjoy our content, uh, thank our patrons on Patreon. It is because of them that we can do this. Link in the description if you guys want to support us. If not, simply by liking and sharing these videos, it really does help out the channel. So thank you guys ahead of time but with all that said let's answer the question does an orc have a reproductive organ orcs do not have sexual organs they are what is called homothallic meaning that everything they need to reproduce is already inside of the orc and they don't need another orc to fertilize their spores and since there's no need to attract or inseminate a mate then the orc doesn't need a sexual organ because he is the sexual organ so whenever you're losing against an orc player, you are figuratively getting fucked. The orc reproductive biology has a lot of perks that were intentionally engineered into their genes by the old ones and that are often overlooked by the single-minded greenskins. Besides allowing the orcs to focus only on waging war, the amount of orc spores produced are so many that the species never has to worry about protecting their spores. They never have to worry about completely being exterminated. The surrounding area around an orc encampment is filled with orcoid subspecies like squigs, grots, and snotlings, which grow from the spores carried out of the encampment through environmental means. Some far-flung spores can even land inside an area never touched by any of the main orc mob. These orcs mature away from the tribe, and they will soon either join the rest of the lads or become feral orc boys. Now for the most part, the orcs don't really care about their spores, but there is one odd boy called a runt herder that actually cultivates the spores in order to breed aggressive squigs and squigots. But the true process of how they do this is completely unknown. It must be some type of biological intelligence, just like the mechs or the weird boys. As far as what other races in the galaxy have been able to gather, there is an underlying process that dictates what type of orcoid will mature from a spore. For example, if spores come to rest on a patch of land that is completely free of orcs, the first orcoid to be produced is a squig. These squigs fight one another, releasing more spores that produce into the next orcoid subspecies known as a snotling. The snotlings are either eaten by the squigs or they themselves eat the squigs, and then when the population of snotling and squigs reaches a certain level, then the Gretchen are produced. And then finally, at the end of the cycle, the orc boys are created. It seems like this process is hierarchical, so the squigs consume the native resources, the snotlings consume the squigs, the Gretchen then organize the snotlings or bully them around, and then finally the orc boys are at the top of the food chain and control all other subspecies. It's actually rare to find a case where the higher tier subspecies outnumbers a lower tier. There are always enough servants and food in a proper orc encampment for the top tier. This is another one of the amazing features engineered into the orc biology. It guaranteed that the orcs at the very top always had food and resources. And the best part about this whole process is that it only takes a couple of days for all of these species to mature, which is why orcs are so difficult to get rid of once they're on a planet. Now to understand more of the creation of the orcs, I'm going to link an orc origin story up above. It not only talks about the old ones, but all of the different biological processes that were developed into the orc body for the old ones uh, war in heaven. So check that out if you're interested. 
But finally, let's answer a follow-up question to all of this information, and that is, why do orcs wear clothes if they don't have sexual organs? And it's not because of shame like a lot of you guys have suggested, it's actually because orcs are vain, and donning clothes shows off the orc status in their tribe. This has been a social norm developed both by interacting with other intelligent species and a natural thing that happens within the orcs. For example, bad moon orcs naturally want to show off their wealth, so they wear certain things. The best example is also the Blood Axe Gang. They wear military uniforms that are a mockery of the Imperial uniform. It's a way for the orcs to basically show that they are better than the other race. Now, feral orcs, on the other hand, are often naked. Feral orcs are the ones that just grow out in the wild. Any clothing that is worn is either a show of pride, they usually kill something and now they're wearing the body as a trophy, or it's a form of protection, so like scales or chitinous armor that was hard to pierce, so now they use that as their armor. And the last bit of information I want to leave you guys off with is if you see a tabletop model and it looks like it's wearing leather or some type of fabric, it's because it is. It's usually them going into a planet like an imperial hive world enslaving the population and the population produces uh, the clothing for them so they use that type of fabric and then there are squigs that are specifically made in order to cultivate leather so it's squig leather that they're wearing uh you know as leather jackets and stuff like that and those were 40 facts on the reproduction cycle of the orcs like I said in the beginning of the video, check out our 40 facts on the origin of the orcs. Uh, that really gives you way more details as far as like what the process is for the orc spore to develop. Uh, not that much lore is written, uh, so a lot of that is just assumption. Uh, but it's good, and it, it like it showcases what each thing is and why the orcs are the way that they are. So check that out. If you guys have any other question about any other species, ask down in the comment section below. I'll try to create a video for you guys. And uh, hopefully now if I get this question asked, I could just send the link um, or post the link and you guys can see that no orcs do not have sexual organs. Uh, they wear clothes because they want to wear clothes. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I will talk to you tomorrow. This is Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate signing out. Oh, if you could put my freedom first in any situation.